Galatians chapter 4, verse 1. Now I say that an heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all, but he's under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. Even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law but does not pertain to the church. It was talking about the nation of Israel. So because they were under the law, Christ had to redeem them. You understand? But we, the Gentile, all we had to do is look to Christ and say, yes, I believe. And we walked in. Boy, that is great. I'm telling you. I mean, the Gentiles had a deal, brother. They had such a sweet deal. Oh, but you know, Moses said in his law, the Ten Commandments, Boy, come on. Give me a break. Listen to this. It says uh, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because ye are sons, God sent forth the spirit of his son in your heart, crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore, thou art no more servant, but a son. You are not even a servant of the Lord. You are a son and a daughter of the Lord. Oh, I'm just a humble servant of the Lord. It's okay. You can be a humble servant. I want to be a son. <laughs> you know, I mean, if you, you, you want to be a servant of the Lord, we'll send you outside. You'll be the gardener. Me, I want to sit with Papa God here. Yeah, I'm a son, see. You, you understand? I'm losing you now. See, it depends where you want to be, right? It all depends on you. God gave you all eight cylinders to fire. Depends how many you want to use. Oh, boy. Mm -hmm. Now, verse 19 of the fourth chapter. Watch this. My children. You got it? You got it? My little children, of whom I travail in birth and again until Christ be formed in you, I desire to be present with you now, and to change my voice, for I stand in doubt of you. Tell me, ye that desire to be under the law, do you not hear the law? Verse 22. For it is written that Abraham... Oh, now you must... Now you must catch this. This is big. For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bondmaid, and the other by a free woman. Abraham had two sons, one by Hagar and the other one by Sarah. One was, one was Isaac, the promise. The other one was Ishmael. So this is what the Bible's talking about. Abraham had two sons, right? You got that? Say amen. amen. For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bondmaid, the other by a free woman. Verse 23. But he who was of the bondwoman was born after the flesh. But he of the free woman was born of the promise. Now, look at me for a minute. Look at me for a minute. God is not talking about those two women. He's not talking about Hagar. And he's not talking about Sarah. He's describing the covenants. He says God has two covenants. One by Hagar, the bondwoman, he was saying that was the law. And he says the free woman was the other covenant. That was the promise. So he was not talking about two women. He was talking about two covenants. Hallelujah. Watch verse 24. It tells us that. You got it? Which, which things are an analogy? For these are the two covenants. The one from Mount Sinai who gendered to bondage, which is Agai. For this Agai is Mount Sinai in Arabia and answered to Jerusalem, which now is and is in the bondage with the children. But Jerusalem, which is above us, free, which is the mother of us all. 
For it is written, Rejoice thou barren that bearest not, break forth and cry thou that travailest not. For the desolate had many more children than she, which hath an husband. Now we, brethren, watch this now. Watch, 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 watch. Tell your neighbor, watch, 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 watch. Now watch. He said, he said now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of the promise. Yee. Hallelujah. Boy, oh boy. Now, let's go on. It says, uh, now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. But as then he was, he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit. Even so it is now. Nevertheless, what saith the scripture? Cast out the bondwoman and her son. For the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So then, brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free. Now, this is what it's saying. Simply put, I know some of you got lost a bit now. This is what it means. Come here, Mark. This is what it means. It says, this is the bondwoman, Hagar, which represents the, the, the law. And this is what he's saying. He says, listen. He says, cast away, forget about the bond woman. I said, she's a representation of the covenant. This is what the apostle is saying. He says, cast away the law. He says, if you cast away the law, you become free. That's what he's saying. That means for a born again, son of God, daughter of God, you should not be in bondage under a law. We're not serving the law anymore. Do this, do that, do this, and do that. If you do this, I will do that. No, we are the free women. Oh boy, oh boy. Are you catching that? There's no more law. I was listening to a man the other night on TV, on Islam television. And as I switched on, I, I love the Muslims. I'll tell you why I love the Muslims. Some people don't like the Muslims. I love the uh, Muslims. Because the Muslims have a spirit of being so zealous for their God. And when I look at the Christians, I don't see it. The people that serve Islam really love their God. Albeit they may, we may differ and we say there's no other God but Christ, but they believe that Allah is their God, but watch how they serve that Allah. Boy, your oh boy, comes Friday, everything shut down there at the mosque. You, you, you understand? You, I'm talking about their commitment. I'm talking about their drive, their passion in serving their God. And we as Christians, we got the real deal. We don't have what it takes. How sad. So anyway, I was watching this man. He comes on TV and he says, he says, you know, he says, we Muslims are very proud. He says, uh, uh, one of the marks that our gospel is the true gospel is the fact that we have so many people that can recite the, the whole of the Quran. He says, but, and he said this on national TV. That's why I can talk about that. I'm picking up from what he said. He said, but in the Christians, no Christian knows the Bible from Genesis to Revelation verbatim. But here's the issue. We are not children of the law. We don't need to recite the five books, the Pentateuch, the five books of Moses, the law. We don't have to know that off by heart. It's okay for study purposes. It's okay to make reference because it forms past part of God's word. It is history. 
You understand? But now we're the makers of history. Have you ever seen in your Bible or the book of Acts, it doesn't have an amen at the end? Why? Because the church is still writing the book of Acts. Do, do you understand what I'm saying? How sad for that guy. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. hallelujah. Verse 5, chapter 5 rather, verse 1 says, Stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you, that if you be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is indebted to do the whole law. Christ has become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, you are fallen by from grace. That means if you are trying to be justified in your Christian walk by the law, you have fallen from grace. For we through, okay, for we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. That's all that's required from you as a son of God. Faith that works by love. I said faith that works by love. 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 That's it. Now, he said in verse 7, You did run well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. Verse 9, very important. He says, A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. For I have confidence in you through the Lord that you will be none otherwise minded, but he that troubleth you shall bear this judgment whoever he is. And I, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer persecution? Then is the offense of the cross seized. I would that they were even cut off which trouble you. For, brethren, you have been called unto liberty. Amen. Boy, oh boy. Amen. It means you're free now. Yeah. You're not under law. You're not under a set of rules. You're not laboring under... No, you are free. Amen. Boy, oh boy. Free. Tell someone I'm free. I'm free. But sometimes people look at us and they say, Oh, but well, you're supposed to be a pastor. You must behave like this. How must a pastor behave? Who gave you the rule of conduct for a pastor? <laughs> Where did you get the rule of conduct? It's from your past bad experience. They taught you junk in whatever church in Timbuktu you attended. <laughs> okay, let me ask you this. What is the qualifications of a minister? What is the qualifications of a minister? That he wears a suit and a tie? Then he's qualified to be a pastor? No. See, it's your last church that told you you must go and study for three years and get ordained, and then you're a pastor. But they teach you junk. They take you backwards. They are retarded, you become retarded. Up until today, your retardation doesn't help you. We're trying to take you forward. I mean, we have to unwind you and te unteach you all of the junk that you've been taught in order that we may run. I'm like a child, boy. I don't behave like a child, but I'm like a child in my faith. I believe all things. Amen. I hope all things. Amen. I mean, if someone preaches to me, man, I get excited. Amen. You've never seen me in a meeting. You'll be ashamed of yourself after you see me in a meeting. I don't sit. I'm jumping, screaming, shouting. I'm telling you. I'm te be like a child when it comes to your faith. Open your heart, believe. You know, the other day, I was lying down in my room. I'm telling you, we're not ordinary. I'm telling you. The other day, we were lying down in the room. And my wife said, all of a sudden, she saw a big, bright, white light in the room. And it shone. And she says, I was fast asleep. But she saw this light. And it was shining. And when she told me the story, I just smiled. And I said, no, that's just my angel. <laughs> it's the truth. 
It's a truth. It's just an angel that's watching over me. How many people said to me when I was preaching, they saw someone big behind me? God opened their eyes for that instance and they saw an angel. I'm telling you. Hallelujah. We're not ordinary. I promise you. We're the carriers of something. We're the representation of God on the earth. I'm an ambassador for God. And don't ask me why God picks different men and women. He just picks them. I don't know why. You understand? I said this a long time ago. I said some pastors need to be bus drivers. And some bus drivers need to be pastors. I'm telling you. Because many true men of God have been called, men and women, have been called by the Spirit of God, but the church never gave them an opportunity. The church kept them behind. But they are the true men of God, the true servants of God. But people that went through the system and followed the, the, the rules of men, the traditions of men, the rudiments of men, they got ordained. And they have taken up the pulpits. But they have no mark of an apostle. Everybody says, I'm an apostle and I'm a prophet. But where is the mark of an apostle? Where is the mark of a prophet? You say you're apostle of God, called of God. Where is the signs and wonders following your ministry? You, you, you understand what I'm saying? We judge as people. We judge the wrong things. We are judging the wrong things. I'm telling you. And if you ended up sadly because you were brought up badly, that rhymes so nicely. (laughs) What did I say? say? I think that was good. (laughs) But I mean, listen, if, if, if you were brought up badly and you ended up sadly, here's the issue. Don't let your kids be like that. Teach them to respect other people. What's wrong? What's wrong? You know, two things that people aren't, uh, uh, they're missing in the church is that they are not grateful. And they have no humility. Some of us are mafias in the kingdom. We just go around bossing everybody, bullying everybody. We know, we, we know what's to be done in the church. Who, who made you such a great guy in the church? You can call the shots, you can push people around. Why? Where's your humility? The Bible says God resists the proud. He gives grace to the humble. Humble yourself before God. Walk with that spirit. Serve other people. What is the use if I see this lady sitting on a seat and I say, come here, go from there, move from there. That seat is not for you. Go and sit there. What's there if you stand up and say to someone, listen, I'll, I'd gladly give you my seat. Amen. We love children. But the Bible says, when the children were brought to Jesus, and the disciples tried to stop the children, what did Jesus say? He says, suffer not the little children to come unto me. And Jesus called the children to him and put his hands on them, and he blessed them. Amen. Some of the children have a more open heart than adults have. A thousand times no. Don't bully people. You understand. That's not the way. That's not the way. We must give up our seat gladly for someone else. If we're having a function one day, and if our chairs are all full, what's there if a visitor comes, we stand up and say, please take my chair. Would it make you small to sit down? No. No. This is your house. When a visitor comes, give up your chair for somebody. You understand? I'll do that. Hallelujah. Children are important. I'm telling you. Children are important. We cannot handle children badly because we do not know what's the future of that child. That child might be the next president of the country. That child might be a next future surgeon or a doctor, or a politician. How can we treat a child badly? No. A thousand times no. We are not to treat children badly. You understand? Yes, we'll train them. We'll instruct them. 
will not let them disturb the meeting. But there's a way to do it. Gentleness is the way. Tell your neighbor, gentleness is the way. Boy, would you allow me just to finish this one more scripture, right? Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7. No, please, really, that's my heart. We must help mothers with little children. If children get crabby, let's help them. Let's help them. Just take them to the room there. Lead the mother on. Help the child. But don't belittle the child. You're not a mafia in the kingdom, right? You understand? We are servants of the Lord. I said we are servants of the Lord. I'm a son of God, but a servant's son. In other words, I'm a son, but I'm willing to serve the master. See the difference? Okay. Last scripture, Romans. Hallelujah. Know you not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law, how that the law had dominion over man as long as he lives. For the woman which hath an husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he lives. But if the husband be dead, she is loosed from the law of her husband. So then, if while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she shall be called what? An adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is free from that law, so that she is not an adulteress, though she be married to another man. Mm. Now watch this. Sure. Show me, show me, give me attention. Come here, Mark. Come here, Rebecca. What's the scripture saying? Turn around. The scripture is saying, it's not talking about a husband and wife. And people wrongly misinterpret that scripture. And they think it's talking about a husband and wife. This is what the scripture is saying. If this man is lawfully married to this woman, as long as she's married to a husband and her husband is alive, she's not allowed to marry, she's not allowed to marry this man. If she marries this man while her husband is living, she is an adulteress. All right. Get ready for something big. You ready? Now. If the husband dies, sit down, Mark. If the husband dies, <laughs> God forbid not here. <laughs> but if the husband dies, she's free. The law that bound her to a husband no longer exists. It now ceases to exist. Now she can look at this man and marry this man. You understand? You cannot now call her an adulteress. Because the law, don't laugh. She's laughing, my hand is jerking. <laughs> was it the anointing? Okay. In other words, she's free now to marry because her husband is legally dead. All right, stand up, Mark. This is what the scripture is saying. Watch. It's not talking about a husband and wife. It's saying this. This is now a wife. She's trying to hold on to this husband, and she wants this husband. <laughs> she is now an adulteress, because she wants two men. This is what the scripture is saying. The first husband is the law. She wants the law, and she wants Jesus Christ. The scripture is saying, you are now an adulteress. You're trying to hold on to the first husband, which is the law. And you're trying to get hold of the second husband, which is Jesus Christ. Because the church is the bride of Christ. So if the church is the bride of Christ, then, hus then the husband is Jesus Christ. The bridegroom of the church. Now, this is what the scripture is saying. If the husband is dead, if the law is dead, look away to the Lord Jesus Christ and become the bride of Christ. That is your husband. You got that? Now, if you are keep on looking at the law while in your heart desiring the Lord Jesus, you're an adulteress. 
you're trying to espouse yourself to two husbands, the law and, and Jesus Christ, freedom. You got that? Now, to the Gentiles, you were never married to the first husband because you were never under the law. So don't even look at that guy. Look at the Lord Jesus. That's your freedom. He's your Savior. You, all you have to do is say yes to Christ and you're free. Right, to the Gentile. To the people in the church, that first husband, you, ne you had no dealings with him. It does not pertain to you. Don't even look at him. Don't even consider him. Because Christ is your way, your way out. Aha, uh -huh. what about the Jew? Now, you were espoused to that first husband as a Jew. But now he's dead. Leave him now. Look away from him. And now you are free as a Jew to choose your new husband. Jesus Christ. But why can't they choose the Lord Jesus Christ? They're still holding on to the first husband, which is the law in Moses. They cannot experience freedom because of the fact that they're holding on to that husband. All right, sit down. Listen, listen to this. Listen to this. Is that powerful? All right. I'm nearly done. I'm nearly done. You understand why we cut praise and worship so that I could teach you. Now, it's verse 3. It says, For then, if while a husband liveth, she be married to another man, she'll be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she's free from that law, so that she's no adulteress, though she be married to another man. Wherefore, my brethren, verse 4, Wherefore, my brethren, you also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that you should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that means the scripture is saying, now you can be married to the one that is raised from the dead. Who's raised from the dead? Yeah. Jesus. You can be now be married to him. Because yeah. the church is a bride. Hallelujah. It says that you should be married to another, even to him who's raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. Say fruit unto God. Fruit unto God. For when we were in the flesh, the motion of sins which whereby the Lord did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. Now watch verse 6. This is big. It says, But now we are delivered from the law, not you, but now we are delivered from the law, that being dead wherein we were held, that we should serve in newness of spirit, not in the oldness of the letter. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay. I had not known sin, but by the law. For I had not known lust, except the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. And it goes on. Now, you can understand Romans chapter 8, verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus had made me free from the law of sin and death. In other words, the law is operating under sin and death. But Jesus Christ, life. Mm. It says, verse 3, For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Mm. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Mm. Verse 8. So then that they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Mm. Verse number 14. Jump to 14. You must read this with me. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. 
Four nights talking about you now. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again unto fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Hallelujah. So then, in conclusion, the church was never under the law of Moses. So don't try to serve under the law of Moses. Don't even get yourself under the bondage of the law of Moses. You are free. Amen. Boy, I'm free. Amen. You, you understand that? If you are holding on to Christ, serving Christ, but you're looking behind you and you're trying to espouse yourself to the law, you become an adulteress. It's not talking about a normal husband and wife. It's talking about a man or a woman that's trying to grab hold of two husbands at the same time. The law and Jesus Christ. If you are free, you are free indeed. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So you turn to your child and say, don't do that. God will burn you. No. You, you understand how you, how you talk? Brimstone and fire. No. We're free. Now for a believer, what does that mean for a person in Christ Jesus? It meant we who were the Gentiles or we simply looked at Jesus. We said, yes, I believe. And in one moment in time, we walked into our inheritance. Everything that God had done now becomes yours. Amen. You become a son and a daughter of God by faith. Amen. All you do is you look and say yes to Jesus. You open your heart and you believe. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You should be excited tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Are you excited? Yes. Isn't God good? Yes. Say, I'm not under the law. I'm, the law. I'm, free. I'm free. Christ has set me free. Set me He's free. made me free. Made me I, free. Am free. I am free. I walk in the freedom. I walk in, I walk in liberty. I walk in liberty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So a Gentile under a curse as soon as he saw Jesus Christ and he said, yes, he becomes curse-free. Oh boy, you would need to catch that. A Gentile that's sick, diseased, oppressed, as soon as he saw Jesus Christ, he walked and he said, I'm free. All right. After having said that, now that you are free in Christ, don't go there and fish for your curses here. That's what most of us are doing. We're fishing for our curses and we're fishing for all the bad omens in our family here. Why? You're free there. You're, you're, you're not cursed. I said you are not cursed. You can get disciplined, yes. You can do wrong things and flout the principles and God will discipline you to teach you. He doesn't discipline to destroy you. You understand? But don't go fishing in the past. Now some of you wives, let me start with the wives. You go back to your husband if he made a mistake in 1940 or you remember that woman you had. Look at you. Christ has forgiven the man. What about the husband looks at the wife? You remember that boyfriend you had? Christ has forgiven them. I said, Christ has forgiven them. It's now finished. Look at you, some of you say, well, I remember that girl. She was in school. She was 16 years old, but a real rubbish. Hey, Christ has delivered her. Oh boy. We're trying to curse people and judge people whom Christ has. I mean, can you just think about that for a minute? All your sins have been washed away. 
You are cleansed. You are now the beautiful people of Zion. Turn around to someone and say, You are the beautiful child of Zion. You are. When God looks at you, listen, you have to talk to yourself like that. Uh, Nadine, is that your son? Come here with him. When God looks at you today, this is what God sees. He sees you are beautiful. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. Say, I'm beautiful. beautiful. You've got to think like that. Someone might say, Well, you like this and you like that. No. The Bible says you are beautiful because God loves you and He resides inside of you. So that makes you beautiful. You understand? Turn to someone and say, I am so beautiful. Do you feel like that? You don't have to go for any plastic jobs. God loves you just as you are. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. You know what? No one can put me down now. They can call me names. They just can't put me down. I refuse to put... You know, the other day I was talking to a man of God and he shared this with me. He said, you know, he says, Pastor Singh, let me tell you. He said, the man that can overcome me has not even been born yet. So I turned around and I said, the man or woman that can put me down has not even been born yet. Now turn it around and say that the man or woman that can put you down has not even been born yet. So nothing can put you down. You understand? You're special. I said you're special. You are beautiful. You are wonderful. You are marvelous. Why? God's made you like that. You know, how, how old is your son? 17. What's your name, sir? Listen, I've chatted with you before. If you receive Christ as your Savior, let me, I've got a message for you. Is it Kristen? Kristen. 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 Tristan. With a T. You've got a bright future ahead of you. I'm telling you. You really do. You have a bright future ahead of you. This is what the Lord says I must tell you. In time to come, you will be highly successful. People will seek you for your wisdom and your counsel. Great wealth shall come in your hands. You will not be ordinary. You understand that. Now, people at school, now, you didn't tell me this. I don't, I mean, first time I checked. People at school look at you and they think you're quiet and you're just kind of laid back. Watch. One day, (laughs) they look up to you. I'm telling you. Because God will promote you and He will put great wealth in your hands. I'm telling you. Come here. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord Jesus. Pick him up. Pick him up. Hallelujah. Look at my eyes. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Just keep on looking at my eyes. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, this young man, let wisdom come upon him. Let the hand of the Lord come strong upon him. That from today, he'll never be ordinary. Lord, everything that you have put on me, I place upon him now. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Look at me. Just keep on looking at me. The anointing strong on you. Don't worry about your mom. You'll miss out if you worry about your mom. Look at me. I'm giving you something. You ready? Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Are you in school now? Give me your hands. Where is it, God? Not here? In the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord Jesus. Give you praise. I'm telling you, young man, something's going to happen to you. You've got a great future, I'm telling you. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I give you praise. Boy, I said, I'm wonderful. I'm wonderful. Turn around and say, I'm wonderful. The Bible says I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. God has tattooed you in the palm of his hands. Every time he looks, listen, every time God looks at his hands, he sees us in a picture. You are beautifully made, I'm telling you. I don't care what you look like. I don't care what your education is. What is your background? God's got a great future for us. Hallelujah. You know, Pastor Chris says, there's only one life for the Christian. Forward. That's the way we're going. Hallelujah. 